Savior Jesus Christ. Happy Resurrection Sunday from the Oak Byer United Methodist Church. One of the members of the churches of the Paul in Charge consisting of Spring Hill, Oak Byer, Leona, and William Chapel. And again, we're glad to be here, gathered here as best we can with just a few of us to bring to you our Sunday morning worship. And we're grateful and thankful for you tuning in and enjoying this broadcast, hopefully enjoying this broadcast as we present to you our Resurrection Sunday service. Our scripture reading will be coming from 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. We'll begin the reading at verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which you also have received, and wherein you stand, by which you are saved. If you keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1, 2, 3, and verse number four. Bro, McGraw McCray is coming with our devotion, a song, and a prayer. Next, Bro, McGraw McCray. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Like that. 
our sand depth has finally been paid. So this Easter, as you hunt for eggs, dressed up in bread and clothes, don't think about the Easter Bunny, think about why Christ arose. Happy Easter. May your Easter be happy. May your day be bright. May your may you enjoy the trees and sweet delights. But remember the meaning. Remember God gift. Remember the resurrection. May your soul up with. Let's join me this morning. Come on, all ye saints. Let's rejoice forevermore. Sound the alarm on the street corner sun. Let the whole world know that we got a cause and we got a reason to celebrate our King. Come on, everybody. celebrating Resurrection Sunday here at Oak Byer United Methodist Church as we bring you this by means of social media and we're glad you have participated and have come to be a part of our worship experience on this day due to the circumstances that we're not able to gather as we once had but God always makes ways for us to get the job done if we're just attentive and listen to his spirit to guide us and direct us in this process. Our scripture reading taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and we want to talk about this issue concerning the resurrection, the resurrection. Now, let us pray. Father, we thank you again for the writings of the Holy Word. We thank you for the inspired inspiration of the Holy Spirit that guides us and directs us in this process. And now, Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In 1 Corinthians, we know that Paul is the writer of this particular book. It's one of the earliest books. Paul comes to Corinth after his second missionary journey, after he had been to Athens. And at Athens, he had been very discouraging to Paul. It had been very discouraging to him. He tried to match the intellectual wit with him. And for the most part, they had rejected the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now in the book of Corinthians, we have two books, 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. And we'll find that in these books, all of the issues and the thing that was going on at this particular church had many different problems, many different challenges, just like we have in life. It's nothing strange to us that life comes with challenges. And yet today we have one of the biggest challenges that I ever seen in my life, and that is this COVID-19, the coronavirus, and it has really, really changed a whole lot about our life. And we encourage you to abide by the guidelines and the rules coming from the CDC and coming from 
the government and coming from uh, the heads of states and that we will abide by those things and, and that things will continue, will continue to go back to as normal as possible. But yet we probably realize that normal will not be the same anymore. But one of the things I always like to say and to encourage us all that we've never been, I've never been on a journey like this before. And you probably have not never needed. But the good news is this. We don't have to make this journey by ourselves. On last Sunday, we talked about, from the book of Philippians, God sustaining grace. And that's what God started. He has a way of finishing because we are his children. Now, I understand here in 1 Corinthians 15, many scholars consider this to be one of the most important chapters in the Bible. This chapter is not only about the resurrection of Christ and Christ being our foundation. All of the ground is sinking sand. It's also about our future. It's about what's going to happen to us. So the subject matter is concerning life after death. This subject is very important to the world at Corinth. So Paul addresses this subject in chapter 15. And Paul gives some very detailed account of this in this chapter on the resurrection. And because Jesus rose, we will rise too. And the gospel involves the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So Paul says, you have received it and now hold fast to it. And the way you hold fast to it is to continue by your consistency, by your faithfulness to the life of the gospel. For we know that the race has not been given to the swift, nor to the strong, but those that endure to the end. So we got to run on all the way unto the end. But you know, as always, you always have some folks. You had some in Corinthians that was not holding on to their faith. But Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5, he said, examine yourself as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourself. And just like in any church, you always have false believers and pretenders. But Paul is saying that endurance is a sign of faith in action. Let me say that again. Paul is saying that endurance is faith in action. Now Paul revealed to them in the first 11 verses the evidence for the resurrection. He gives the testimony of the church. The testimony of the scripture, the eyewitness, Peter, the 12, the 500 to James, and himself a witness, Paul. The message that they all preached was the resurrection of Christ. Isn't that good to know that they were on one accord when it came down to the message? And that is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. To help us out, Acts 17 gives us more insight into our text. Paul finds himself in the midst of the center of the ancient world. Athens where you had all kind of philosophers and philosophies and many false gods and religions and idols. You foreseen the stories. And Corinthian was a city heavily influenced by of those things that were going on around them. And this influence had carried over into the church. And they believed in the immorality of the soul, but not the body resurrection. Some attended to that particular school of thought. And so what Paul does, he lets us know, brothers and sisters, uh, Corinthian is, 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 is living among all these ideas, the Corinthian church and all these philosophers and philosophies. So Paul's objective was to make the matter of the resurrection absolutely unequivocally clear. And I say it again, one of the objectives that we can see that Paul elaborates in our text is making the matter of the resurrection clear because if there be no resurrection and we might as well shut our Bibles, go home, and go fishing or something. 
So in verse 13, Paul asks a question. What if there is no resurrection? We know he was fully human, and we know he was fully God. But just for a moment, let's look at Christ's humanity. In Acts chapter 2, it identifies him as a man approved by God. Yes, he was a man that was approved by God. In Galatians 4, he was born of a woman. Verse Timothy 2, he was the man Christ Jesus. In Hebrews 2, he was made like his brethren in all things. In Mark chapter 6, he was identified as the carpenter son. He was conceived in a woman's womb. In John, he was the word made flesh and dwell among us. Among us. In Luke 2, he grew in stature. In John, he's weeping. In Matthew 4, he's hungry. We're looking at his humanity. In Matthew 8, he is sleeping. John 4, he gets like you and me sometimes a little weird. John 11, he filled with sorrow and grief. We feel with sorrow and grief sometimes on this journey. In Luke chapter 2, 22, he's beaten with fists. In Matthew 27, he's whipped. In Luke 23, he's nailed to a cross. In John, and make that, in John 19, he is seen dying. And he is pierced and he dies. But he's not only just man. He's what the theologian call the hypostatic union. All man and all God at the same time. Grandma would say, ain't he all right? He's the hypostatic union. One minute, everybody home. They don't have no food. Next minute, he's taking two fish, five barley loaves of bread, and feeding 5,000. All right, one minute, they on the sea. And a storm come from out of nowhere. Yeah. It looked like the boat going to turn over. Yeah. But somebody had the nerve to go and wake him up. Come and on. somebody this morning need to wake Jesus up. Because yeah. he may be asleep, not in my life, but he might be asleep in your life. Yeah. So you might need to go and have a little talk with him. And when they woke him up, <laughs> good God Almighty, Amen. they said, Master, do you care that we perish? I don't know about y'all, but if I would have been on that boat, I would have sure went and woke him up. Yeah. And the reason why I would have woke him up, I would say, look, Jesus, <laughs> I don't know about them up there, but you need to get up for me. Because yeah. we need to get something done about this storm yeah. that's going on in our life. Yeah. And how many of y'all got storms in your life? Oh. Sometimes you need to wake up the master. Yeah. Not that the master is asleep, but you need to wake up to the fact that he's still available. Yeah. And Jesus gets up and he says, peace, be still. Yeah. And one minute, we see them about to fall apart. Yeah. The next minute, he speaks to that storm and everything calmed down. Yeah. And one writer put it this way. He said, what manner of man is this? Yeah. So we call him the hypostatic union. Come on. So if there is no resurrection, we might as well throw in the towel. Yeah. Because all of our preaching will be in vain. Yeah. But I feel like the old country singles, they call themselves Brooks and Dunn. Yeah. And I can occur with them that this all doesn't end in a limo ride in a hearse. Yeah. Because I believe in the words written in red. And the words written in red is the words that Jesus said. And he said, I got to go because if I don't go, the comforter will not come. Yeah. But I'm going to a place. Uh -huh. I'm going to prepare a place yeah. where the wicked will cease from troubling and the weary will be at rest. Yeah. I just don't believe God has brought us this far uh -huh. to leave us now. Yeah. If there was not a resurrection, I don't believe Stephen would have offered himself to be stung yeah. if he didn't believe in a resurrection. Yeah. I just don't believe Andrew mm -hmm. would allow himself to be tied to a cross yeah. and left for days until dying. Yeah. 
I just don't believe Peter would allow himself to be crucified with his heels up and his head down. Yeah. I just don't believe James uh -huh. would have put himself in the position to be beheaded. Yeah. I just don't believe Paul would allow himself to have his head to be put on the chopping block yeah. according to tradition. Come on. Uh, without a fight, if he didn't believe in the resurrection. Yeah. I know this morning, uh -huh. this evening, that my God, he got up. I know that my God, when he got up, he got up with all power yeah. in his hand. Yeah. And here's where I've been waiting, trying to get to for the longest. Yeah. In verse 58 of our text, it says, if you believe uh -huh. and really believe that Jesus got up, and if you're truly thankful for the resurrection, yeah. other words, he says, be ye, O oh brothers and sisters, therefore realize, be faithful all the way unto the end. Yeah. I got to read that verse right quick Come because on. there's power yeah. in the word of God. Yeah. Let me read that and I'll leave you alone. Yeah. It says in verse number 50, it says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abiding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I'm glad to report, brothers and sisters, that Jesus got up on that third day morning with all power in his hand. Can I get a witness here? Yeah. So I'm going to continue to be steadfast in the midst of my struggles yeah. and in the midst of my trouble. Yeah. And steadfast literally means to be seated, to be settled, and to be firm. Other words, my soul yeah. has been anchored in Jesus. So I say to you, my brothers and sisters, yeah. hang on in there. Yeah. I know it gets a little rough. In the garden, get a little tough, yeah. but you just hang on in there. Yeah. Like the psalmist said, I'm just like a tree yeah. planted by the rivers of water. Yeah. Grandma said, and I shall not be moved. Yeah. Just stay rooted and grounded in God's word. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly Come and on. constantly be filled yeah. with the spirit of God. Yeah. Oh, brothers and sisters, I'm glad there is a resurrection. Yeah. And the reason I know that there is a resurrection because he rose yeah. down in my soul. Yeah. Did he rose uh -huh. in your soul. Yeah. And when he got up, he got up with all power yeah. in his hand. Yeah. His church say amen. Amen. Say amen again. We again amen. want to thank God for the privilege and opportunity amen. He allowed us to come and to share with you this morning in our Resurrection Sunday worship service. And we know that Jesus got up with all power in his hand. But let amen. us pray. Father, we thank you again for another privilege yeah. and another opportunity you have allowed us to come yeah. for a time of worship. Even in a circumstance that we're in, we thank you for how you made provision for us still yeah. to lift you up. Yeah. And you said if you be lifted, you said you'll draw all men unto you. Yeah. And so we thank you again for all of your many blessings. Yeah. Help us to remain focused and remain steadfast and settle yeah. and firm in you in the midst of this storm. Yeah. It's our prayer we pray in Jesus' name. And let every heart say amen. Amen. Amen.